So now I want to talk a little bit about the, the Python code and its corresponding server code that I called kvadmin.py that we're going to use to kind of code the closest bit of code that we're going to do to be reading and writing this database. Now here's the thing that leads me to this kvadmin. There is no PG admin, no dbeaver, no PHP my admin. There is not a built-in Again, I don't understand why. This probably will change in a week. They'll release one. But for now, as of this recording, there is no administration tool except a way to read that data. That's it. Um, there's no command line tool like PG or MySQL. And you, all you can do is go into your KV dashboard and look at the data. You can't insert data. You can't delete data. It would be so easy for them to write this. And it turns out that over, you know, there's a Dino 1 and a Dino 2. Um, people started writing admin tools because it's just a reasonable thing to do. But then, you know, changed so much between 1 and 2 that all those admin tools were stranded and 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 people just are waiting for Dino to do it. And then by, by the time you're doing this, you may be able to just use a Dino admin tool, which is great. I just hope Dino puts it into Dino rather than us having to go download another dependency that's not the Dino way. The Dino way is the basic stuff should be in Dino. So let's hope that Dino builds a simple admin tool and renders this sort of obsolete except as a programming exercise. And I love to build these little admin tools in a way to show how, you know, so I can, you know, write an end-to-end -end piece of code. So what we're going to do is we're going to, there's a piece of Python code that's going to run on your computer that's going to log in to the Dino KV and send web services back and forth. So the actual admin tool is a Python bit of code and the Dino KV is some JavaScript code that receives web services with the token that receives web services and reads and writes the Dino KV. Um, there are some Python Dino KV client libraries, but they seem really hard to get started. And so just what the heck, let's write our own little JavaScript. We can look at the JavaScript. Let's write our own little Python. Let's write our own little web service protocol. And then let's just write it all and then examine it all. So that's what we're doing here. So the, we're going to write a Dino web server. And I'm going to use a framework called Hono. There's a bunch of them. Dino has its own one called Fresh. I just looked at a bunch of sample code and I thought this spoke to me better. And so what Hono is, is Hono turns a generic Python runtime into something that listens on a port and then routes requests to controllers. And so we import from an online place, dino.land. That's the official dependency place. So we say const app equals new Hono. And that's creating a giant piece of software, an object that is the Hono server. And then we add routes to that. We're saying if we receive a get request that has a prefix of slash hello, we're going to call a function. That async open paren c close paren, that's short and the little arrow in the curly brace, that's short for like an anonymous function passing in the parameter c. And so the code for that anonymous function passing in the parameter c is inside the curly braces. And so we're just not even going to look at the incoming data. We're going to create a JavaScript object, answer colon world, that's a key value inside of JavaScript. And then we're going to send back a JSON response to the browser. Now we've registered that. And then to listen for incoming requests, we have to say dino.serve app.fetch. And so away we go. So once that's running, and I've got it running on hono.pgfree.com, you can say HTTPS hono.pgfree.com slash hello, and it will run that code. Probably it'll take a while for it to start <laughs> because, you know, it's I'm using the free one there for hono.pgfree.com. That's a Dino application. You say hello, and it says world in JSON. Now, just here you see it, the technical difference between JSON and JavaScript objects. In const result equals answer world, you notice that answer does not have double quotes in it. But if you look at the response from the honopgfree.com, the quote answer quote is the key. And so JSON is a kind of subset of JavaScript objects where the keys are supposed to be, ex supposed to be explicit strings, not just kind of unstringified text. So that's the difference between 
JavaScript objects, and JSON. Now let's jump into our client code. This kvadmin.py, you run kvadmin.py on your computer, whether it's a Windows or Mac or, or a, and I've, you've got instructions, install instructions, and a walkthrough for this. You run it, and then it's just a series of commands like uh, pg. So samples is a way to dump out some sample JSON so you don't have to do it all the time. It has a set command, and um, and you give the set command the key in my little slash syntax. It's really a JavaScript array. That's first one is book, second one's Hamlet. It's easiest for parsing, and you got to put it on a web service request. And so we might as well just start with this kind of serialized version of this array. And then it asks, well, this is going to be a post request to a URL that includes some JSON, which is the key value pairs that are inside of this JSON object. The language is Old Anglican, and it's William Shakespeare, it's Hamlet, and we'll give it the ISBN of 42. And so that posts to that URL that's shown with a token, and that token ensures that you have to know the security password in order to store data. And you get back from that uh, OK True and version timestamp. And the version timestamp, again, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail, but the version timestamp is part of its eventual consistency. If two sets start racing, then it uses the version timestamp to resolve the sets, which happen, it has to order those and um, one of them has to win. So it's okay for two sets to simultaneously race to an eventual consistent database, but one of them has to win. You can't have a situation where after it's all settled down, you are doing get from one server and it's a different value than the get from another server. And so all the version timestamp is telling you which set won, okay? You can do a get again with the book slash Hamlet and that creates another URL slash kv slash get slash book slash Hamlet with a token. And then it goes and retrieves that uh, JSON blob for you. And it gives you both the key and the value, which you're going to see. We're going to make good use of that. And it also tells you the version timestamp. And so that would be a way for you to check to see if the data you set into the database is the data that was eventually there, because you could look at that version timestamp and say, yup, after it all settled down, I do a get. And that's the version, the version timestamp is the one that I got when I did a set. So now let's talk about what's going on in the server. Now, if you recall, we already looked at a really simple KV server, so we sort of know what Hono is, and we know about application routes, so we know about Dino.serve. The next line, const KV equals await Dino.openKV, that's the magic, right? That's the cool thing that we're in an application, whatever the name of our application is, like mine is called kvadminapi.pgfree.com. But there's a database for it, and I don't have to make the database. It's just always there, and I don't have to have security to connect to it, because if I'm in this application, that's my database. Wonderful. And so we just take a look at the routing. It's app.get slash kv slash get, and then the rest of it is the key. And the key is just a string, and it's going to call an async function, pass the request data in as C. And we're going to check the token, and that's just looking for the key, whether it's 42 and whether it matches the code in check token and the install instructions tell you to mess with check token so that you can set your key to not to be something other than 42. And the check token is going to throw an error, uh, an exception that will give a 401 if the token is wrong to say you're not authorized. So check token either works and comes back or it sends a 401 back to the uh, browser or whatever is calling it. Then it pulls the rest of the path, const c.rec.param key, that is the rest of the path, which is slash books, well, it's books slash Hamlet. And then I split that, and then that becomes an array, which is a two-entry two array with books and Hamlet as the first two entries. And then we're going to do an await, and because that's a time thing. You're going to have to talk to the database. That's going to take a jillionth of a second or something. Do a kv get of the split key, which turns it into that array, and then take the result and send it back to the browser in JSON. So now let's take a look at what's equivalent to kind of the SQL select, which is list, list slash books. Now this is a prefix. So it's any key that starts with books. Now it doesn't give you the exact key books, but it's slash books slash something. And that turns into a simple web service request, kv slash list slash books token equals 42, which we then send to the server and it retrieves 
the book that we're looking for, which is the Hamlet book. Now you'll notice the records now is an array. We only have one of them, but you could, if you had a bunch of them, you could have many, many key value pairs in this array. And the, but it gives you back the key and the value because you don't know what the key is because you just said, give me all the keys that start with books. And away you go and you get the timestamp, but you also get this thing. If you're doing paging, like limit, a limit clause in SQL, the cursor is sort of the limit clause and there is a limit clause for this as well. And if you want to do repeated lists where you want to pick, take 50 and next 50, next 50, there's a mechanism for that. And the cursor that you see there at the bottom, that's what makes that part work. So just to finish our CRUD up, we can say delete slash book slash Hamlet. And we're going to send a HTTP delete request, which is like a get and a post and a put. Um, HTTP delete request to slash kv slash delete books hamlet token equals 42 and that will delete it we just get a status of 200 for that that says i did it and then if you do list slash books you will see that there are no records anymore there's an, the records is an empty array because we just got done deleting slash books slash hamlets and so this is a real quick overview i've got a code walkthrough that walks through both the client and the server code and uh We'll go through this in a lot more detail rather than just putting it on slides. Uh, so I hope that you uh, found this useful. Cheers.